Hey everybody, we had our first full session and we're going to talk about what happened, so let's dig in. Welcome back everybody. So before we get diving into what actually happened, there's a few things I like to do at the end of every session. The first is to figure out what went well and the second is what I can be doing better. What went well this session? My players are really leaning into the role play this time. Not to say that they weren't in our last campaign, but they definitely have leaned into it quite a bit more this time and it's been a lot of fun. They're really involved in learning the lore of Icewind Dale and wanting to explore more of that. So that has been really fun for me to lean into that a little bit more than we have in the past. What could be better? I wish I would have leaned into the character backstories right out of the get-go. I decided I wanted to wait a little bit just in case to see if anybody wanted to change anything and one of my players did change their race from a bugbear to an elf, which is totally fine, but I probably should have leaned into the backstories a little bit more to get my characters just a little bit more hooked into the adventure. So we're going to do that going forward. Let's talk about what actually happened. And before we do that, one more thing, let's talk about our party again, just kind of go over them one more time. First, we have Tavar, who is an elf ranger, and I think they're going to go Gloomstalker. We have Quark, who is a dwarf cleric who really wishes he could be a paladin. We have Rory, who is a Leonin barbarian. We have Jack, who is a Herengon bard and we have Kema, who is a human sorcerer. Our party all gathers together at the North Look, which is a tavern and inn in Bryn Chander, and they meet with Danica Greysteel, who is their patron. They decided in Session Zero that they wanted Danica to be their patron. So they go meet Danica, who introduces herself and explains that she has been researching Twingas ever since she got to Icewind Dale. She has been trying to find ways to help change the climate here, as it's been pretty much an everlasting night and it has been very, very cold. There's no warm season in the last couple of years. So she has an inclination that Chwingas are going to be key in figuring out how to help change the climate. So she talks to our party about that. They had some questions. She answered. She also provided them with the Lantern of Tracking elementals so that they could find Chwingas as they're roaming the Ten Towns. She said she hasn't seen any in Bryn Chander and she's been looking for the past week or so, so she's pretty sure they're not here. But if they get near one, the Lantern will turn green and that's how they know that there are Twingas nearby. And the party was like, yeah, sure, we will definitely help you with that. And they went back and forth, kind of got some information about Twingas. I just read that straight from the book. There's a section that talks about them and their lore. So we talked about that for a little bit. After they kind of had settled on that, she said, there's a couple other things I think you guys you guys should know. The party, the characters themselves already know this, having been in Icewind Dale for a little while in the Ten Towns, but it's so that my players also know. But there is a group called the Order of Oral that has kind of made a name for themselves recently, and they are performing sacrifices to the God of Winter in an attempt to change the weather and make things better. They're making these sacrifices to Oral. There's sacrifices of humans, food, and light, just depending on where you're at. And to be aware of them, their lead is Kethra Icefang, so keep your eyes out for her. Danica mentions that she doesn't really believe in what they're teaching, but lots of people of Ten Towns have headed this way to this religious group. After they had this kind of quick conversation, Quark decides that he wants to go into business with the tavern owner. Quark is all about making a pretty penny. He heads over to Scramstracks, who's behind the bar, has a conversation with him a little bit about what ales they're selling and whatnot, and so he asks for a keg of ale, for which Scramstracks charges him half price, and Quark decides that he's going to brew it, make it a little bit better, and call it Quark's Ale. Try and make something, a business, out of this with Scramsax. So Scramsax said, yeah, sure, I'll let you take this one. You come back, give me something good, and I will sell it for you, and you can help. We'll share the profits. Quark has got a keg of ale that he has every so often. I think every, once a day, he's rolling some checks on to see if he can make it better, and after three successes or three failures, whichever comes first, it'll either be great or bad, and I think he's got a couple of those in already as we've adventured. So Quark, always looking to make a pretty penny. While they were in the tavern, they, they met Old Bitey, who is a singing fish, which is like that little trout, that like the little fish that flops over and sings a song. It's basically that, and they sing a little song to whoever passes by about every five minutes or so. My group really got into that, and they kind of focused in on the poem, and they think that maybe it's some sort of treasure. Because Old Bitey has been around for a while, someone has probably already figured that out, so maybe I'll leave a clue to something else. You know, a note saying, haha, I beat you here, head this way, and you can find something else, so that they can kind of go on a little bit of a treasure hunt if that's something they want to do. They kind of mill about in the tavern for a little while, and Tavares kind of keeping an eye on things, and he notices a hooded figure kind of in the corner just watching them think very much like Aragorn in The Lord of the Rings and just kind of keeping an eye on him just doesn't do anything so Tavari kind of mentions this to the party and Rory is blunt and heads straight for him and just is like hey what's going on but this individual this stranger is a mute and can't talk so just points to his mouth and says I can't talk then Rory was like kind of upset by that and offended that they're faking so did everything she could including all kinds of stuff like tripping and things trying to get this person to talk who couldn't talk so we'll bring them up in later in our next session prep we'll talk about that a little bit more but after all of that's done Jack decides he's going to play a little bit for the rest of the tavern. We have him roll a, a skill check and he does really well so he gets a little bit of a tip from those around and they start singing with him especially during like the 
uh, chorus. Everything is going there as people are pretty heavy into their cups at this point. As they're about to leave, Denica says, hey, one more thing. I've got these friends at the Black Iron Blades who have had some trouble getting some materials. Would you mind stopping by and just checking to see if there's anything you can do for them? So the party's like, yeah, sounds good. She says, great. Come meet me at my house after you guys have either found Chewingas or whatever. Points to where her house is on the map. So the party heads out off on their way to the Black Iron Blades. And as they get a little bit into the streets, Tavar notices with his passive perception a little snow bank that seems to be moving. And we have the encounter with the ice methods. Tavar kind of sneaks in a little bit to try and see what's going on and kind of watches them a little bit. And then the rest of the party kind of come, moves in. So Rory, I think it was, got hit by a snowball from one of the ice methods who are kind of this mischievous little characters and creatures. Rory gets hit by the snowball and they get all upset and we have them roll initiative. They all rolled higher than the ice methods, between the first four characters, they are able to defeat the first Ice Mephit, and we had another one. And Jack cast sleep on this one, so it fell asleep. And from there, they tied it up, and they had a long conversation about what do we do with it. Back and forth, do we take it to, like, the sheriff? Do with this thing. This can't be normal. So they go inside, and they talk to Danica real quick, and Danica says, I don't know that the sheriff's going to do anything about it. He's a pretty busy guy. You can try if you want. And they're like, ah, we'll just kill it. So they kill it, and then they decide they're going to take the body to the sheriff first. So they head to the sheriff, Sheriff Markham Southwell. He thanked them, but he's got like stacks and stacks of papers on his desk. And he says, thanks. I appreciate it. A plus gold sticker. Get out of my office, basically. I appreciate it. I'll look into it when I have time. He kind of just brushes them off. From there, the party heads to Black Iron Blades. And they had a really good conversation with Garn the Hammerer and with Hruna and Elza. So the other two, Storn and Kruka, didn't do much talking. So they get there and Garn kind of explains what's going on with the iron ingots that they were stolen that they've had a hard time keeping shipments coming. And he says, Haruna here and her group, they ran into an, a Yeti who killed one of their friends and tore him limb from limb. And the rest of them just kind of ran back to Black Iron Blades where they were supposed to deliver these iron ingots from Clan Battlehammer in the mines near Kelvin's Cairn. So on somewhere on the way, they ran into this Yeti. Haruna kind of pointed them out on the map where about it was. And she said, just be careful. These things are dangerous. And the party was like, yeah, okay, sounds good. We can go find this for you. And while they're there, Quark is like, yeah, by the way, you should, you should go stop by the North Look and go try Quark Sale. Ask for it. And <laughs> he's throwing perception. To every, pretty much everybody Quark talked to, he's like, you should go to the North Look and ask for Quark's ale. He's trying to... Pre- trying to grow his business already before even any of the ale is there. So hopefully there's a demand and uh, Scram Shack is all about it. So anyway, party decides that they're going to take a long rest tonight and they'll head up in the morning because it's pretty late in the evening at this point. They all go and they go basically to like the best western of Bryn Chander, kind of a quieter place where they all are able to take a nice rest and they wake up the next morning ready to go. First I have them decide, are they going to take the roads and then jump over or are they just going to make a, a beeline for Kelvin's Cairn and they decide they're going to make a beeline for it. So they're going to go through the wilderness and be a little bit more treacherous, but that's what they decide to do. And a few hours into their journey see a blizzard coming so they decide well let's not go press out into the village or into the blizzard Kame uses a cantrip and melts some snow they make it like themselves a little ice cave and they hang out in there during the blizzard and they every once in a while just poke a hole to make sure that the, the uh, they don't get covered in and can find their way out they decide that they're going to do that f- and stay there for the night have some conversation amongst themselves which is really fun to watch and to see and eventually they take watch and during watch Kame at about midnight saw the aurora across the sky and made note of that. She thought it was pretty cool. And the next morning, well, they all were like, hey, what happened? Did anything happen? Did she feel any different? No, nothing feels different. It's just something you notice in the sky. The next day, they press onward in the same direction, and eventually they run into where the sled was. They run into the dismembered body of a dwarf, and around them, they can see that there are tra- sled tracks that are being pulled away, as well as a few other tracks. They roll survival check, and they don't really know for sure. There's a bunch of them. They're not sure exactly what they are, but they see the direction they're going, and they follow them. Eventually, they catch up to the goblin who are the ones that left the tracks and have taken the sled with the iron ingots. They catch up to them and they devise a plan to scare the goblins away. And they're going to use dancing lights and a bonfire to try and scare the goblins and just scatter them. However, the goblins have been instructed that as soon as something fishy happens, they're going to blow the horn to alert the goblin captain. So that all goes down. They all kind of freak out a little bit, the goblins do, and they blow the horn. And my party's like, oh, crap. Combat, roll initiative. So during the fight, we have a whole bunch of back and forth. Our party struggled quite a bit early on to get hits in as they kind of made their way in slowly. Tavar kind of hid in the trees and then the rest of the party kind of slowly worked their way in and the goblins were just hiding behind the 
sled the entire time, popping off shots, holding their action as until the party got closer. And eventually Rory gets close enough, she can use her racial ability called Roar, and she frightens a couple of the goblins. Jack uses sleep to get a couple of the goblins to sleep. And Kaima, this entire time using her bonfire, kind of moving it around a little bit to do some damage on some of the goblins. Quite a bit of damage back and forth. Quark is using his healing on the party to make sure that they're standing up. And then eventually the goblins get the realize that they're about to be kind of surrounded. So they disengage and head around this little outcropping and hold their actions until the first person comes across. And that first person happens to be Jack, our bard, comes around the corner and gets hit by a couple of arrows and goes down, unconscious. As that happens, the next turn is Tavar. Tavar is at this point in melee range with one of the sleeping goblins and just decides, you know what, I've got advantage on this melee attack, I'm just going to kill it. So kills the goblin. That is pretty much where we left off. One of our party, one of our players had to leave. So we had this huge intense combat. Jack goes down and we end the session. There's still a handful of goblins that are up. Plus we've got the other wagon load of goblins that can still come and deal with a party if needed. I wanted this to be kind of an eye opener because last campaign I wasn't as focused on tactics. And so since then I have found what the, the monsters know what they're doing. And I feel like already my players are seeing a little bit of a challenge, which is good. That's something that they ask for. So things for me to remember going forward. I've got a couple NPC interactions that I need to remember. The first is with Danica. She is the group's contact. She gathered them to find the Chewingas and improve the climate in Icewind Dale. She provided them with information about Chewingas, the Order of Oral, who is a group planning to appease the God of Winter. So these are just things that I need to remember going forward. Scram Sacks, just remember that he has this improved brew agreement with Quark. Old Bitey, I need to remember, we already mentioned this, but there's a singing fish and every five minutes there's that song and we may have that lead to some sort of treasure. Milo is a halfling in the tavern who talked to the party and provided information about a strange creature he saw. So I forgot this, forgot to mention this earlier, but while they were in the tavern, the North Look, they asked around and Kema found someone, a halfling named Milo, who was at the bar and was pretty deep into his cups and asked about Twingas and he said he thinks he had seen some around in Targos, but he's not sure and he also made it sound kind of iffy. Sheriff Markham Southwell told him, uh, the party told him about the ice mechanics. He's kind of talked about this, brushed them off, said he was busy. Uh, Garn the Hammer is a blacksmith. We talked about that already. Friends with Danica. And then we've got Runa, Korax, and Storm, who are the dwarves who work for Clan Battlehammer and were attacked by a yeti while delivering iron ingot. That's pretty much it in my first session. Thank you guys a ton for watching. Huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are the absolute best. We will catch you all in the next video.